Hey everyone, it's Flackfire. 2016 saw the launch of Battlefield 1 and the game's first free map, Giant Shadow. We've seen a lot of changes to the game as well. Suez was reworked and we got a new free gadget in terms of the grenade crossbow for the support class. Now it's 2017. So what does that mean for Battlefield 1 and for the Battlefield franchise? Here are 10 predictions for what we'll see in the new year. Number 1. More free maps. It's been said the best predictors of future behavior are past decisions, and free maps are nothing new to the Battlefield franchise. Giant Shadow dropped for free in December for Battlefield 1, and both Battlefield Hardline and Battlefield 4 received free maps. Another EA and DICE product, Star Wars Battlefront, follows that exact same formula. Historically, these DLCs include both completely new maps and also nighttime versions of existing maps. I'd expect to see this trend continue in Battlefield 1. I recently spotted some concept art on ArtStation from DICE's Johan Johnson that looks like it might showcase Amiens under low-light conditions. At the same time, most of Battlefield 1's multiplayer maps are adapted from the game's campaign. The free map Giant Shadow borrowed extensively from Through Mud and Blood, and there are still some choice potential maps in the campaign, especially in Friends in High Places and in The Runner. Number 2. More free guns and gadgets DICE just dropped the grenade crossbow, and I figure there's a lot more where that came from. Data mines from the early builds of Battlefield 1 included references to the Swedish Schöngren inertial shotgun, yet it's nowhere to be found in the game. It's possible the weapon was cut prior to release, but I'd say it's more than likely to find its way back into the game as a freebie given its connection to Sweden, which is of course DICE's home country. There's also a lot of obscure and improvised gadgets used in World War I that could fit with Battlefield 1, and also DICE may choose to resurrect the Phantom program that worked very well for Battlefield 4. Number 3. More Legendary Weapons The Sawtooth Knife and the Bartek Bludgeon are only the beginning, in my opinion. Although Battlefield 1 is rotating offerings and battle packs to keep things interesting, there's always a chance for a puzzle piece for a legendary melee weapon. I know a few people have already unlocked one or both of the legendary melee weapons. DICE and EA want to make sure battle packs are appealing for even long-term Battlefield players, partially because they want you to buy them, so to help this appeal in the long run, expect to collect more puzzle pieces for new melee weapons and probably other items like weapon skins or the aforementioned Schoengren shotgun. Number 4. Air Superiority Mode This game mode was first introduced in Battlefield 1943 and it returned in Battlefield 3 and Battlefield 4. There were whispers of the game mode in early Battlefield 1 data mines, but of course it was conspicuously absent at launch. I fully expect to see air superiority in Battlefield 1 for 2017. Before it happens, however, DICE needs to iron out some issues with a hit registration on aircraft. This could be the reason we didn't see the game mode at launch, so hopefully when it arrives, it'll be nicely polished. Number 5. More Community Challenges DICE was already quite active in 2016 with community involvement. Participating players had chances to obtain the 1911 Pistols Incarcerator skin, the Houtier skin for the MP18, and a number of dog tags. We already know DICE's plans for these challenges since there are a number of Zodiac dog tags visible in the Battlefield 1 Companion app. We don't know the exact details yet on what it will take to unlock them when the community challenges go live, but we will find out sometime in 2017. I would imagine we'll see more opportunities to obtain some special new weapon and vehicle skins this year as well, hopefully corresponding with major historical events or personalities in World War I. Number 6. A Divided Community DICE and EA have already announced plans for several premium DLC packs, two of which are confirmed to feature the French and the Russian armies. Premium costs about $50, and many players won't be willing to pay that price for any number of reasons. Battlefield Hardline suffered tremendously from this structure. I was rarely able to find lobbies for the game's paid DLC. Part of this was due to the game's tepid reception, but it's also inherent to premium structure. It's a bit ironic that I was unable to find lobbies for DLC I paid for because few others purchased it. Now, I don't foresee this issue being as bad with Battlefield 1 since it was, of course, extremely well-received. 
There ought to be enough players with premium to make the subscription worthwhile, especially since there are no plans for a new Battlefield game in 2017. Number 7. An announcement for the next Battlefield game. Speaking of new Battlefield games, I would expect to see some sort of announcement or tease for the next Battlefield game late this year. We know we won't see a new Battlefield game this year, but we might get clues about 2018 and beyond. It's not immediately clear what form that announcement would take. We could see a proper trailer like the one that basically destroyed the internet with Battlefield 1, or it could be very subtle. Few people aside from myself read between the lines on the inclusion of the 1903 Springfield rifle and Syndicate Lewis gun in Battlefield Hardline and what it meant for the future of the Battlefield franchise. Is it possible we could see the inclusion of weapons like the Thompson Annihilator that could point to a return to World War II? It's also possible Battlefield 1 may go the route of Rainbow Six Siege and offer a second season of content for online multiplayer. Siege released in late 2015 yet has remarkable longevity, so much so that Ubisoft is pushing a second season of Operator classes to keep that experience fresh. Could we see the same for Battlefield 1? It's quite possible, and Siege is proving it can be profitable. Even after Battlefield Hardline's release, Battlefield 4's multiplayer numbers remain strong. With both Visceral and DICE currently working on Star Wars games, more maps, armies, and weapons in Battlefield 1 seems a lot more manageable than a full-blown sequel. The prospect of a second season of Battlefield 1 content seems even more likely when considering the differences between the Battlefield and Star Wars Battlefront franchises. They're two different types of games. Not everyone interested in Battlefield will pick up Battlefront. Number 8. A Forgotten Fronts DLC I've said before that if you tried to fit everything in World War I into a video game, it would never get finished. DICE has an opportunity to take us deeper into this global fight by bringing us to locations often overlooked by mainstream history. Now we know the focus of two of the four announced DLC expansions, but where will we fight aside from France and Russia? There are a number of options for inspiration. East Africa, New Guinea, and perhaps even China. Such a DLC could showcase a more exotic side of World War I, including maps inspired by the Battle of Tanga or the Siege of Tsingtao. There are also a variety of other battles in the Balkans that could be featured. I don't want to hazard too many guesses here, but this direction seems a natural evolution for the Battlefield I franchise to keep the experience fresh and varied. Number 9. A Level Cap Increase Battlefield 1's classes are capped at level 10, yet it looks like DICE built in some room to grow. Perhaps they will add new weapons that unlock at a higher class level, similar to those like the Hell Regal and the Calibri. Now, it won't be a change to the progression system, but it will give longtime players something new to work towards. And lastly, number 10, Snow Maps. Many in the community have been clamoring for winter maps, and it's likely we'll see some in 2017, most likely in the Russian DLC. Hopefully these snow maps will arrive with corresponding dynamic weather conditions like snowfall or a blizzard. We've seen some concept art showcasing a French tank and a snowy trench, and textures for snow are already in Battlefield 1. We get a beautiful look at snowy mountains and friends in high places. I think it'd be very cool to fight as infantry on such a map, since battles in the snow and mountains were particularly common on the Italian front. If a snow mountain map makes it into Battlefield 1, I'd really hope to see an avalanche as some sort of Levolution event, similar to the rock slide that we saw in Avanti Savoia. Avalanches killed over 50,000 soldiers in World War I, one in three soldiers killed at higher elevations on the Italian front, died in an avalanche, so if there's going to be a snow mountain map, that makes logical sense. But what do you think about these predictions for 2017 and Battlefield? What are yours? Tell me in the comments, I'd really like to hear them. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, leave a like, share on websites like Facebook and Twitter, and of course, subscribe for more Battlefield 1 videos. Thanks for watching. Yaralarını tedavi edin.